Some sections of this broadcast may be pre-recorded. <laughs> hey guys, felt like I should say that because as many of you know, I am anticipating the hurricane, Hurricane Milton coming. And so pumping out these YouTube videos, making them in advance is a beautiful distraction. Um, when this one actually, I'm going to I'm going to post it on Thursday. I think I'm going to schedule it to post on Thursday, I should say. Then uh, the hurricane should be out of the area, I believe, by the time this posts. So we'll see. Um, don't know how things are going to go just yet. So I don't want anyone to, that's watching this to go, oh, Rebecca's got power and everything's fine because it's Tuesday morning um, when I'm recording this. So. And if you're watching in the future, hello, future citizens. Isn't that weird? YouTube is kind of like a time travel machine. We can watch old music videos, old, like, I don't know. It can be anything, documentaries and such. I just feel like this is so cool. It, it, YouTube is our time machine in a strange way. So welcome, everybody. Today, <laughs> I want to speak to my artists because I myself am an artist as well and it has been just a struggle to um, solidify my place in the creative world to really support myself creatively and I know it's a struggle for a lot of artists and I wish it wasn't and I don't think it should be. Um, so I came up with this analogy I guess you could say because here's the backstory I was this is probably a few months ago or so I was talking to my dad who is an ESTP if you're into personality types he's very he's a mechanic he's blue collar just sort of um, old-fashioned just that mentality of you work hard and you do the practical thing um, I don't think my dad has like a creative or artistic bone in his body. So this, I guess I got this from my mom's side. And then if we go way back on my dad's side, I heard like my great grandfather or somebody in my dad's past was in a band. So it's like skipped and it, and it came to me. <laughs> um, but I am the artist in the family basically. And that's okay. It just makes things a little challenging as many artists know. I don't think we typically get put into artistic families. I mean, some people do, they're very fortunate and their parents do the thing that they want to do and they can open doors for them and it's a beautiful thing and they support them and they understand the process. Um, but if you don't come from a creative or artistic family who understands what this lifestyle and mentality is all about, then it, it, it makes it a little trickier, but it can still be done. Um, and sometimes I think we're putting those families for, well, no, I do believe we're putting those families for a reason to show them and to open their hearts and to open their minds to other ways of being um, <laughs> in the world. So, yes. Um, but anyway, I was talking to my dad and um, he always has work, right? And I was just saying, you know, it's just such a shame that people with my proclivities, artistic, creative expression, it's like there's that starving artist trope, right? And people just sort of expect you to have a day job and then you can sort of do your thing on the side and that's supposed to be okay because otherwise, yeah, you're just going to start because people don't think art is really necessary or essential, which don't get me out on that tangent <laughs> because it is in my book. Um, I would love to see a lot of people that say that do without their books, their TV shows, their movies, their music, um, anything, any visual arts, any paintings they have in their office or their walls. Just live a very bare bone, boring existence and see how that, how far that gets you. <laughs> but we're neither here nor there. I'm preaching to the choir. Um, but I said, Dad, imagine a world sort of inverted where uh, people that have uh, jobs that we would consider practical now, right, or essential, like, a, yeah, I don't know, people that work on things where their services, everybody needs them, were starving and nobody needed their services, but the artists and the creatives were the ones that were always able to find work, able to roll in the dough. Um, and I said, and imagine that because you have the proclivity to be a mechanic, 
you can't help yourself. You don't want to be an artist. Now imagine you feel like you have to be an artist because that's the only way you can make money and survive in the world. Now, how does that feel? <laughs> um, and I think it, it may have finally clicked for my dad because we're as creatives as artists, we don't wake up one day and go, you know what? I think I want to be a singer today or an actress or a painter or a novelist or whatever. I just, uh, that's just what I want to do. No, it's something usually you've been doing since you were little and you can't help. It's embedded in your DNA and your soul and just the very fabric and makeup of your being. It's your essence. Everybody I know that plays an instrument, for example, they, they say they have to play their instrument every day or they get depressed or um, it's just something you have to do. So I don't know, I just think uh, that could be an interesting analogy for those of you who need to explain it to people. Maybe have them put the shoe on the other foot and think, okay, well, what if I had to do the thing I don't wanna do in order to pay my bills, to have a roof over my head, to get food in my belly? And then, but my soul's calling is wanting to do the practical thing. It's such a, it's such a strange time because I feel like everyone should be able to do what they love to do because I honestly think if we could, if people could do what they were called to do, their purpose that they were put on earth to do, we'd have a happier, healthier society. Mental health would be better. People would treat each other better. I think a lot of people are angry and frustrated because they're just fitting, they're forcing themselves to fit into a mold that they were never supposed to fit in to begin with, but it's like survival instincts. Um, so there's that. So let me know what you think, all my creatives and my artists. I'm excited to hear from you. I was gonna make a video at some point called I wish we would stop saying the term starving artist, but that kind of is, um, I could sort of fold that into this as well, because I think words are powerful and the more we continue that narrative, the more it will uh, continue to exist basically. And I think, um, I don't, I don't think we have to live in a world where that is true. I think that we have the technology now, the resources, we're in an abundant universe. If your soul is crying to do something to create more beauty and art in the world, it should be able to, and you should be able to survive just fine and thrive on top of that. So I'm a huge advocate for the arts. <laughs> it's just something I value so, so much. We all have things that, uh, we have our values and that's definitely up there for me. Obviously, I mean, I know you guys probably see my instruments. You've probably seen my characters I do and my songs that I like to play and uh, stories I like to write and poetry and all that good stuff. So you know if you're here that that's what I am and I'm sure you may be too. Um, and if you're not, please have compassion for those of us that are and some understanding that we didn't choose to be creative, we just are. So, um, I just imagine a better a better world for everybody, a happier world. And that's all I have today. Thank you guys for listening. I appreciate you. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.